The final weekend of regular season games brought an eventful end to a unique season for minor league cricket. But before I get into my playoff preview with Sahil Kincherlo from It's Called Cricket, it's time to name this week's standouts. Batter of the week for the Pacific is Anthony Bramble of Golden State, who led the league with 139 runs, helping the Grizzlies earn a trip to the postseason. Batter of the week for the Atlantic is Somerset's Sonny Patel, who entered with the Cavaliers 3-4 for four in the fifth over of a must-win chase to guide the team to victory. Bowler of the week in the Pacific is Shubham Ranjani, taking three huge wickets in Lone Star's final chance to make the postseason. And the bowler of the week in the Atlantic is Kareem Agour of New Jersey Somerset with five wickets in two games at an economy of 2.79. Next up, we have Sahil Kancherla. Don't go anywhere. We are heading into the playoffs. The picture's been sorted out. And we have Sahil Kancherla from It's Call Cricket here to preview the playoffs with me. Sahil, it's great to have you on. Uh, thank you for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, super excited. Yeah, I know things didn't quite work out for Seattle this season, um, but uh, it was a good season. Uh, I think I think that they I think Seattle performed quite well considering all the players that they that they lost this season. Definitely, yeah. Um, had the good fortune of playing for Seattle for the past two years. Um, took a break this year, um, and the teams changed dramatically. Um, a lot of the big names that you saw kind of take charge for them in the past couple of seasons, you know, Harmeet Singh, Andreas Gauss, they're all on different teams. Um, so the whole landscape of that team has changed dramatically. And it was a big question mark to see how far they'd go. Um, and on just a couple inches away from breaking into super eights, which we have now, but um, yeah, it was overall a good season. Lots of learnings I would say for them. It, most definitely. And we're going to get to those two stars you mentioned, Harmeet and, uh, and Andres because they had a very interesting weekend last last weekend. Um, but we're going to start with the West. Uh, you're very familiar with the West, of course. As you as you just said, you played for Seattle for a couple of seasons. Um, East Bay, whom Seattle knocked out last season, finally makes the playoffs this season. They cruised in. Uh, they didn't have to wait till the last day, like last the last couple seasons, to, to miss out. They'll be joined by the winner of the Silicon Valley Strikers and the Golden State Grizzlies in the Super 8. Uh, SVS versus uh, Golden State coming up. Uh, Kovinder Singh's back at it, but this time he is on the Golden State Grizzlies side of things. Yeah, um, East Bay, third place both the last two years. Narrow misses um, for them, but a really quality franchise. They've got tons of players and some special youth as well. Sanjay Krishnamurthy, who's been a star on both sides of the ball for the past couple of years, even had a chance to captain this year. Um, you've got an incredible pace bowling lineup, Carmi, um, taking charge there. Um, just three really good franchises from the West. And, and we actually had a, a <clears throat> no result here, which is a very rare thing in the West outside of Seattle to have a <clears throat> game that's, that's canceled. Uh, you know, California doesn't get a lot of weather issues, but the East Bay Silicon Valley Strikers game uh, that was scheduled for, I think, this last Monday was a no result. So that didn't affect the standings, really. Um, or, you know, it, yeah, it didn't affect the standings. Uh, East Bay was going to finish first. Silicon was going to finish second. But that Seattle, Golden State, uh, th there was going into last weekend, there was a question of who was going to advance. And it ended up being uh, being Golden State, who um, had a better head-to-head -head record um, at the end of things. But Golden State, you know, this is the, this is strangely the only division um, in, in the in the league that's, that's advancing a, play, a team to the playoffs with a losing record. What are your thoughts about this Golden State franchise, this this team this year? They didn't have any no results. They finished four and six outright. Uh, they were led by uh, Anthony Bramble with the bat. They have a ton of great players on this team, but I don't think we've really seen the best of them yet. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think we have either. I think they underperformed throughout the first part of the season. Um, and then coming into this last weekend, uh, really is a reset for both teams, Seattle Thunderbolts and Golden State Grizzlies. Um, the goal was kind of clear, you know, win and you're in. You just had to focus on that one weekend. And I think Golden State stepped up to the plate um, over the Seattle Thunderbolts. You had Anthony Bramble, um, who we all know is a great talent. He stepped up tremendously in both games this weekend. A guy who's contributed on both sides of the ball, Harish Kukani, he, he was incredible at this past weekend. And then obviously having um, Niraj Goal back in the mix, somebody who missed out 
last year. Um, fantastic pace bowler. Rate him really, really highly. Um, so, you know, I think this Golden State team has the potential. Um, it's just about can they perform when it's required of them. Right. Last season, we like you said, we didn't see Niraj uh, goal play. As we know, he's been a name that's that's been well known in in uh, cricketing circles around the USA for years. Uh, he's been in USA selection camps before. I'm surprised to not see him in the USA team. Um, you know, but I think maybe we will in the future. He had a tremendous season this season, averaging uh, 20 um, per wicket, 20 runs per wicket, uh, which is which is excellent for a fast bowler. And you know, we we saw Vatsal Vighela. You know. This this team has a lot of names that we're that we're familiar with. I am shocked to see them only win four games. I'm pleased to see them in the playoffs. I think they can pull things together now, but it's going to be a rough road for them, and they're going to have to defeat a team that has a lot more experience with success. Well, that has more experience with success in the Silicon Valley Strikers, and this is a team that has had to go without on McChan this season, who's moved on to the lightning in Atlanta who finished in first place. Uh, but they did, acu- they did acquire Lahiru Malanta who scored 261 uh, runs in his nine innings this season at an average of 32 uh, at, at a strike rate of 126. And Lahiru has been, has been fantastic. He's three times scored a half century this season, uh, 15 sixes. Jara Wallace had the gloves recently, uh, which means Lahiru Malanta has been playing in the field. We saw an amazing catch from him in the slips that last was, week. That was incredible. Wow. <laughs> that was true Superman type stuff. Yeah. And and not to take anything about away from Rahul Jarawala, but it, for my money, I don't know if there's a better keeper with, with the gloves than Lahiru Malanta. And to see him, what he's capable of in the field, we saw him in the field a little bit in a major league cricket. And I think he's he he understands that on that team, if they have that composition, he's not going to be taking uh, Conway's spot. So it's good yeah. to see him get some, uh, it's good to see him get some action in the field. Um, so Lahiru making that great play in the field, uh, Gary Graham, as they, you know, we've, he's, they've counted on him in the past to score. He, he, he wasn't his usual self this season. They got Colin Archibald, uh, who's performed very well with the bat at the end, just like he did with the Morrisville Raptors, uh, last season. He's, um, and, and also bowling in the death and, you know, he's a very good bowler, but yeah, this, this, this team is full of players with loads and loads of, uh, experience and loads of a success. Of course, a lot of young players. We have, um, Dev Tadani, who's already got. 30 plus matches in the league in in my of minor league uh experience behind him as young as he is still consistently taking wick- wickets every week and they're getting contributions from everywhere when you've got a Rahul Jarawala and you've got a Dev Tadani on your team and and then you know all your senior players are as good as they are they've had a lot of movement in this team this season but they they're just such a deep team that uh they they when one person fails they seem to be able to turn to the next yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Silicon Valley, you know, one of the top tier teams in the past uh, couple years of minor league. Um, they've just got loads and loads of experience. So you have that Sri Lankan duo with Lahiru and Shehan just has so many, so many games of experience. Um, and then you have Rahul Jariwala, Dave Tagani, some youth there, like you said, who are arguably the most experienced youth combination in minor league cricket. So I think this team is still a very strong team. They're balanced throughout the lineup at the top in the middle, and they've got some great pace bowling. Obviously, Sara, you know, can't speak highly enough about him. So I think they are uh, definitely contenders to come out of the Pacific. Yeah, as you mentioned, Saurabh Netravalkar, for for my money, I'm taking Saurabh. If, I, if, I, if I've got the first pick in a draft mm-hmm. and it's got to be a bowler, I'm taking Saurabh. That's probably... Oh, yeah. It's probably <laughs> going to be my pick every single time. Um, he's consistently amongst the top performers in the league. He's got a reputation that precedes him. It's hard to find him having a bad game. Uh, and when he does start a game poorly, he rebounds. He uh, does. Yeah, he's he's just he's just a phenomenal bowler. Who's going to move on to the Super 8 between these two teams? I think I've got to go with the, with the experience here. I just like the composition of the Silicon Valley a little bit more. Um, I like what they do on both sides of the ball. Um, I, I've got to go with them. I've, I've got Silicon Valley. Same here. I think they just have they have more contributors. Batting in the whole in the whole West has has taken a slide this this yeah. season, which yeah. is why Lahiru Malanta. You know, this is a team that if he's performing, 
I don't know if I don't know if Golden State can can beat him. If Lahiru scores, you know, well, I I don't know if Golden State can overcome that uh, based on recent trends with that team. Uh, I mentioned in the off season going yeah. into the season that I felt like Golden State should should be more aggressive batting and they should, um, you know, everybody should take the responsibility to score a little quicker. And yeah. I don't think they've done too good of a job of that this season. Uh, as a team, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna favor uh, the strikers in this matchup to to advance along along with, of course, East Bay, who's had a tremendous season. They've been the team to beat kind of from start. We kind of assumed that going into the season, I I at least I did, I assumed that they, that they were the top team in the league. Maybe they had maybe a little bit too much of the same ingredients. Uh, a little bit of redundancy in that team, and we've seen that with uh, with their with their bowling. It's tough to tough to get all of these bowlers in the team at the same time, especially the the right arm fast bowlers. But they've managed to balance it out quite well. Um, what do you what has been the biggest key to success in your mind for East Bay? Yeah, a couple things. Um, I believe this past week uh, weekend, um, Sanjay Krishnamurthy broke into the top ten of wicket takers for the first time this season. Um, you know, we've all we all know what a great talent he is. Um, I think he's even gotten me out before. Um, but he's <laughs> he's a great bowler. Um, played with him in uh, various youth camps, and he just has a great mentality. Um, and he can strike with both the bat and the ball. You know, he can step up on both sides. Uh, so having him really firing as that key spinner um, has been huge for them this season. And then obviously you have that you know trinity of pace bowlers. Um, who can go off at any point. Um, you've got Karma, you've got obviously Rusty, who's incredible. You've got Abhishek Pradgar, who's been taking tons of wickets this he's season. Been, he's been terrific, uh, yeah. And he's and he gives them that variety that they need from the left exactly. side. Yeah, 100%. Um, so I think, you know, honestly, just a lot of guys who have been stepping up on, um, who, you know, have kind of taken a backseat in the past couple of seasons. Uh, and now they've got a really complete team along with, you know, David White on the batting side of things. Dukash Mohan has been batting really well. Um, so overall, you know, and then you mix in on Angelo Pereira. It's just a, it's a great lineup start to finish. Really, really like these guys. And we and we had Angelo Pereira missing for a little while. With, and Sanjay Krishnamurthy yeah. took over as a the captain. They didn't lose a beat. He didn't lose a beat as a player. Uh, he, his batting this season, yeah, his average isn't high. It, it it hasn't been high since the first season he ended up of minor league where he averaged forty three. Um, but he's done what the team needs to do. He's a he's emerging as one of the best true all rounders in the in the country. Um, I you know I have no problem saying that. But in just nine innings this season, he's tied his 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 uh career single season record uh for or you know his best career season but that's been because of the the steady amount of bowling that he's given been given he's you know he's got 16 wickets at a uh sub 6 economy if you look at his innings if you look at his numbers every season single season he's building a resume of consistency and dependability and i think you can bet on this guy uh right now but yeah they they've got a great team we saw Carmine Laro this past weekend he took uh i believe 3 wickets um but yeah when he's in the team this team is just a whole nother level if you ask me um so yeah i i like their chances as long as they they can stay healthy and i think in a super eight that's going to test them a little bit but they Definitely. do have as we said they got a lot of depth especially in particular roles it's just can Carmi stay healthy i think he gives them a, an advantage in the super eight group against those you know really difficult uh central teams especially which we're going to talk about next speaking of those difficult central teams the mustangs clinch the central and we'll see who else advances to the Super 8 from that division as the the Dallas Exforia Giants face the Lone Star Athletics. And then the winner of that's going to face Michigan. And then the winner of that is going to advance to the Super 8. It's a little bit of, of a confusing situation there in Central, but they do have eight teams. Every other division has six. And so every division is, send, is sending half of their teams into the playoffs. Uh, so four teams go to the postseason from the Central just as three teams from the other divisions do. Um, but right now, let's talk a little bit about this division and how good the Dallas Mustangs were. We'll start with that. 
uh, I picked them at the beginning of the season as favorites to win the league. They have eight major league players on that team. They started a little rocky. They almost lost their first game, and then they did lose their second game, and they ended up with just two losses on the season, um, which we, we we said this division, could everybody could just beat themselves up, and then you might have teams advancing to the playoffs who, with, with poor records. Uh, but Dallas was 8-2. and two. A net run rate, which was pretty significant when you consider how tough this division was of uh, 1.3954. Now, that wasn't the tiebreaker. Uh, the tiebreaker was wins. And then the second tiebreaker was head-to-head wins against the teams that you you tied with. And that's what uh, allowed uh, the, the Exforia Giants and Lone Star Athletics to advance uh, ahead of the Chicago Kingsmen, who actually finished above them in that run rate. So we have a confusing situation, but we have the playoff uh, teams determined. And um, what do you th- what are your thoughts about about this division this season? Yeah, this division, I would say, was easily the mo- most competitive in um, minor league cricket. Uh, you've got a eight teams. Um, you've got the addition of the Dallas Exploria Giants. But individually, each of these teams has gotten exponentially better in terms of the quality of talent. Um, honestly, a huge migration of players into the Central Division, just super, super competitive. Obviously, the four teams that made the playoffs, the postseason. Um, uh, one of my teams to make um, or to go really far in the tournament, the Chicago Kingsmen, in fact, missed out um, despite having a very talented squad. Um, and then even the Houston Hurricanes, who I believe ended up quite low and underperformed by their standards um, who miss out. So overall, a great division. The Dallas Mustangs, so, so talented. I mean, this might be the best team we've ever seen in minor league cricket. You've got eight major league players. Um, and then the locals that make up the rest aren't too shabby either. So um, honestly, just I'm going to, I believe it's going to be a struggle to beat that team. Um, but yeah, honestly, a very, very talented division. And this is a, this is saying a lot coming from you. Uh, with your experience with the Seattle uh, Thunders, who are the defending champions in the league, who themselves had a phenomenal team last season full of, you know, I think they had, what would what, they have, six major leaguers on that team? It, it was a very, very good team, oh, eventually six. Uh, but yes, uh, that was a great team. So for you to say that, that Ma- Dallas looks like the best team, I agree with you. I think it's pretty much, uh, um, I think everybody kind of agrees that this team is just, is just loaded and it it just becomes a question of of now um is there enough ball to go around so to speak is what i said earlier in the season i think they felt that out earlier in the season i think that might have been an issue early but but ultimately their best players which they have a lot of have been their best performers Corey anderson with 376 runs he's been for my money and probably he'll probably win the win the league mvp uh he's just been a head and shoulders above everyone else in the league uh, andres actually andres not far behind him we saw him nearly get his first century in minor league cricket. we didn't see any centuries in minor league cricket this season um, but Andres was knocking on the door in that game down in uh, Grand Prairie on Friday night, which was the display Dallas put on. The Dallas uh, Mustangs put on over Exforia in that game it was just truly impressive. So, yeah, let's talk a little bit, a bit about some of these other teams. First of all, Michigan Cricket Stars, who who finished in second place, uh, a full two points ahead of every other team with, with six wins, three losses and one uh, no result. And well ahead of everybody else behind them in that run rate as well, uh, truly earning their spot. Now, they, they did have the benefit of not having the most difficult uh, schedule in the league. This this division was unique because you couldn't do a home, you couldn't do a you know, play everyone twice type of situation. Uh, there were eight there were eight teams in the league. So some teams you got doubled up on and some teams you didn't. And I think Michigan kind of got the benefit of having a relatively easier schedule than some of the other teams as it turns out now going into the season you can't you can't say that uh but yes as it turns out they had what appears to be a slightly easier uh way of things nicholas Curtin leading the team with 263 runs he has been fantastic doing a lot of his scoring just running out running to um you know keeping the strike uh, moving you know, rotating strike quite often finishing with an average of 46 um but yes they've had Great performances from um, Muhammad Mosin, uh, Zishan Maksud. Um, they 
they also got a lot from their captain, uh, Rizwan Chima, who I think very highly of. I think everybody in the Americas in uh, really respects Rizwan Chima. Um, but yes, this team has looked really, really solid. Uh, and it's interesting. Finally, they make the playoffs after two seasons of just barely missing it. Yeah, um, a lot of great players. Obviously, you mentioned Nicholas Kern, who's been an absolute revelation with the bat. He's topped the charts like since week one. Um, and then you've got Zishan Maksud, who's contributed on both sides of the ball. Mohamed Mosin, who you typically know for his bowling, but has really stepped up with the bat this season. Um, so, you know, honestly, just a great lineup, very talented, deserve to be in this postseason. Um, but my question for them is how will they go against some of these really strong Texas teams? You know, you've got um, the other three teams in this central division postseason are from Texas and they've been they've been great all season as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that how that fares for them. Right now, they actually lost a game against St. Louis uh, earlier in the season. Um, and, and then their other two losses were against the Dallas teams, the Exforia Giants and the uh, the Mustangs. So they've they've managed to do well. Like uh, they they beat the the Kingsmen um, on on the Saturday game, which pretty much put the Kingsmen out of the playoffs after the uh, considering the abandoned game on uh, mm-hmm. Sunday, um, which was p- bad luck for for the Kingsmen who didn't advance basically because they just didn't play enough games. They had three, uh, unlike everybody else in the division, they they had three uh, no results. Everyone else had at most one, and Dallas uh, Mustangs, who finished in first place, didn't have any. It went a long way for them to get the points needed to finish in first place to not have any no results. So if we look at things a little bit differently here, you 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 you, you put the shoe on the other foot, so to speak, and you you put the Dallas Mustangs with three no results, and those three games happen to be the games that they <laughs> that they would have won. You know, you see them with a five and two record and three no results. You see them with thirteen points, which would be the tie tie them for uh, Michigan Cricket Stars. So they'd still make the playoffs. But yeah, it's a hard luck for the Kingsmen, who actually had a very very good t- very strong team. Um, great performances from them. But let's talk a little bit now about the the Lone Star Athletics, who uh, you know they they were on the brink of missing out of the playoffs last week. This time last week, Natish Kumar, I spoke with him uh, on last week's show. He was he had a phenomenal season. Natish Kumar, we 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 had talked about. I believe I I believe it was. I heard this stat from you guys. He hadn't scored any fifties in his entire. Uh, um, minor league career until this season where he has uh three of them uh thankfully now um so yeah he he really came alive this season helped that team Shahan Jah- Jahangir Shahan Jahangir who's has been good as well Milan Kumar um Ranjani has been his usual self we got to see a lot of him up close last season um but yeah he's been one probably their most consistent bowler this season yeah, um, the Lone Star Athletics, one of my favorite teams, to be honest. Um, really love that top order. Um, yeah, Nitish Kumar, he's been, you know, we all know what a talent he is. Just hasn't gone to that 50 mark, just very consistently um, putting up runs, but not really getting those milestones. He's a great player. Um, we saw a lot of Shayan Jahangir in MLC this year. Um, we all know the talent that he can be. Um, he's performed for the U.S. as well. Um, my only question for them is they've got such a strong top order. I believe, you know, Shilbo, Millen, Shayan, they've all put up over 150 runs on the season, but their next most is only 52 runs. Um, I really question if you get past that top four, you know, are they very, they're very susceptible at that point um, right, to, right. A, a, to a collapse. Um, and so a lot of their uh, success depends on how that top order performs. And if it doesn't on any given occasion, it's going to be tough for them to catch up with the rest of their order and their board. Right. So, yeah. Go. You're you're right. And, 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 you know, when you get to it, when you get to this point of the season, when you get to this collection of teams, every, everywhere you can make a diff, you can, you can distinguish yourself from another team matters. Lone Star hasn't gotten the greatest contributions from their youth group players. Like some of the other teams have, I think the team that probably got the best contribution from their youth players in the central is outside the playoffs. That will be the Houston who got tremendous contributions. Oh, yeah. We saw some good contributions from St. Louis as well uh, from various players on that team who, who filtered in and out of the team. Um, but yes, um, we didn't get a ton of that from Lone Star. Lox Perrick himself didn't, didn't play all the games. I think he played about half the games. Um, but yeah, that this is a very talented team. And like you said, they're, they're kind of a top heavy team, but 
if 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 these are this is T20 cricket, you know, it's it's uh, I, I think they're the type of team that they can race off to a really big uh, lead. Basically, they can they can score, you know, one t- one one ten or so in the first 10 overs and still finish with 180 if they get the wickets in the wrong places. That's the question for them. So yeah. we only have a couple of teams in this se- in this league like mm-hmm. Dallas this past weekend looked like they were going to score about 190 and then they scored 220. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like there aren't a whole lot of teams in the league that are that deep that 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 can lose wickets and continue to pile up runs at at a at a fast rate and that's what's going to separate these teams I think in the in the super eight. But Lone Star has to get there first and to do that they're going to have to beat the Exforia Giants who are a new team to the league this season. Yeah, Exforia is you know, a new team, as you said, very talented, honestly, um, a lot of great players, names that I hadn't really heard too much about before this season. Um, but you have, you know, guys like Akarshit Gomel with the bat, who's been incredible. He's a fantastic bat. Um, yeah. Smith Patel, we all know and love. Um, Chaitanya yes. Bishnoi. And of course, you throw in Harmeet Singh. I mean, that team is very well-rounded, um, right. lots of talented names. Yes, and talking about young players who have stepped up a little bit this season, uh, Remendar has been good for them. We saw him in the in the USA uh, U nineteen team in twenty twenty one. He hasn't, uh, you know, really put his put his stamp on minor league cricket too much before this season. Um, yes, he you know he got a lot of experience in in twenty twenty one, but you know we saw some subpar, uh, good stuff for a young player, but not good enough for the league at that point now he's showing that he is good enough for the league he scored um he scored 128 runs in four innings this season uh, with uh twice uh, twice finishing not out um they're counting on him to put a little bit of runs on up at, towards the end that you know uh, of the innings where we saw him before with the t- usa team opening the batting so it's good to see him adapting to a new role on a team that that is so deep that has so many options with the batting because because they can they can put Harmeet Singh to, to open the batting they can bat Harmeet Singh at number six whatever they you know they've got so many options on this team um, that it, that you're going to have to make yourself flexible as well and it's great to see Dar doing that for this team but yeah as I mentioned Harmeet Singh um, we haven't seen the same har- har- brutal Harmeet Singh with the bat this season uh, as we did last season um, I waited for him to bat so much in in Major League too <laughs> we all oh, wanted yeah. to see Harmeet so bat. well. We all want to see him. Yeah. <laughs> to me, the big the big name on this team is Gomel. We're starting to talk about him, and you know, when when you when you watch games against good teams, you, you're waiting for him to come in because he could be the difference in the in in the game. He can, yeah. And just a fun tidbit about Akarshit Gomel. He was actually in the MLC setup, but he was a part of the Seattle Orcas support staff. So not as a player, but he was around all that talent he was in that system and you know we knew him there but now as a player he's been incredible for the exporia giants this season um absolutely incredible with the bat uh he can really turn a game around like you said um yeah he's top tier but will we see him on the playing side of a team like seattle next season i i think it's i think it's pretty likely it definitely is yeah yeah so so let's make our pick about how how is this lone star versus exporia uh game gonna gonna go yeah, um, honestly, if you ask me, two very evenly matched teams, I think they're both, they've got their strengths and their weaknesses. Um, but I've got to go with my captain, you know, I've got to go with a known winner, Harmeet Singh. Um, I think he turns, he changes gears in postseason. He becomes a, he goes to a completely different level. So I've got to go with the Dallas Explorer for that first matchup. Yeah, I think, wow, that's, that's both like you said both of these teams are good this could go this is might be the toughest matchup to choose in this particular round because i don't think we've seen the best from jahangir this season yeah and mm-hmm. i don't think we've seen the best from the athletics this season we haven't seen a complete game even even though they made the playoffs this weekend we i talked to uh, to nantesh about this last weekend they, they haven't really played their their best game yet we haven't seen that from them we've seen dallas playing in this past weekend against uh against the Mustangs that we've seen the Giants failing failing against the Mustangs this last weekend uh but we've seen flashes of greatness from that team i think they they have a little more depth in their team uh and uh yeah it's going to come down to me to to bowling and i think i got to give the Exforia Giants a little bit of a, a edge in that department yeah, so let's let's move on to the Atlantic now 
Uh, we'll start with the with the the South. It's a little easier to explain the South. Um, mm-hmm. The Atlanta Lightning went through to all the way to the Super Eight. One only lost one game this season. Won seven games, two no results. Basically dominated that division with a net run rate of one point six eight. Um, they did, and they had a new captain this season in on Chan. This is the second straight season where he's captained a team to first place in the division, and this is the this is the second team he's done that with. Um, so, you know, Unmuk didn't have a great major league season. I think sometimes he can, he, if any, every time people seem to almost forget about him, he puts his hand up and he demands that you pay attention. And I think that winning the division as the captain um, and, and doing so well, he also did, he's done well with the gloves for that team too, when, when, they, when he's needed to. Um, he's he's made himself a versatile player for that team. I think he deserves an awful lot of respect. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about Harmeet Singh before. Another known winner is Unmuk Chan. That guy just wins. You know, he's got that winning mentality, and he's gone to a new team, a new environment, and he's replicated that success that he's seen with the Silicon Valley Strikers in Atlanta. So, you know, a very talented team, a team that's kind of been – you know, in the middle of things over the past couple of seasons, but now they've really stepped up with a couple of new players. Um, for me, apart from Unmuk Chan, two other names really stand out. That's uh, Mark Parchment with the with the bat. He's been incredible this season, 230-odd runs. And then, of course, one of my favorite players in minor league, um, Fani Simhadri. Uh, he is incredible. We know all the wickets that he's taken last season um, with the Seattle Thunderbolts. Uh, hasn't seen... That same amount of wickets this season, but he still topped the wicket charts for them. Um, his cutters are incredible. In the death, he's almost unplayable when he's on. Um, really love him as a bowler. Um, so, yeah, honestly, a very strong team in the Atlanta Lightning. Yeah, I mean, Fani, like I said, they had a couple of no results there. <laughs> Who knows how many wickets he could have piled up in those two games. Um, mm-hmm. He's just he's just the type of guy that when he has a big game, he has a really big game. Um, and he can bowl. You know, he bowls great in the death. Uh, he, but he he can bowl just about any place too. He's good at, at at understanding how to use the wicket to his advantage. And we had some slow wickets in the in the south this season. Um, and he is a very good bowler to bowl in those, those kinds of conditions. Um, uh, Talat was very good as well for them. Um, McNe- McNally was was great. Neve McNally was 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 such a fun player to watch this season. Um, just like I mean, like the the enthusiasm and the confidence that he has in himself i really enjoy watching that guy um mark parchment as you mentioned i don't think that i don't think that we can say enough about how good mark parchment has been in minor league cricket both this season and last season but he's been very good he's look at his numbers the numbers he put up this season they look like maybe you know good numbers but they don't look amazing but on the wickets that he had to bat on you know he gave them such a massive uh foundation uh to, to just you know to to build and with the bowling that they have behind them it, it, you know it was like if mark parchment has a good game they're winning the game is, is what it felt like all season Janaid Siddiqui with his strangely economical uh leg spin bowling uh that he's so famous for was a great addition to this team as well um but yeah they're going to be tough they're going to be really tough for anyone in the Atlantic to deal with going into the super 8 so yeah they get a they get a, uh, a free pass right to the super 8 um and then we got the Atlanta Fire last season's Atlantic champion versus the Fort Lauderdale Lions uh, to decide who also advances and so let's talk a little bit first about the Atlanta Fire, who had kind of a, a um, maybe I guess would be considered a down season for them, um, losing three games. Uh, but they, if you look at this team, <laughs> we just <laughs> talked about how we just talked about how good the the Lightning is. But on paper, it, you're it's hard to top the depth in the Atlantic in the Atlantic Conference. I don't know if you can top the depth of this team. Yeah, I mean. They're probably a close second to the Dallas Mustangs after probably the one of the most stacked rosters. Um, they've got Ovis Pinar this year. I mean, you can't speak highly enough about him. He's one of he's definitely a top five bat in the country, if you ask me. Sure. Um, uh, you've got, you know, some great names like Kenner Lewis, absolutely destructive at the top when he's on. Um, and then, you know, you've got some new names as well that they brought late into the season. Um, Lendl Simmons, we all know him for his performances on the international stage. Um, and then Ryan Compton, who showed up 
with the Seattle Thunderbolts at the end of the last season. Yeah, you know, they've just got so much firepower at this top in this top order that if any one of them click, it's a tough day for the opposition. Yeah, it's tough. And then you got Hussein, you got Aaron Jones, you got Jamar Hamilton. These are these are guys. Jamar Hamilton, we haven't seen the best from him this season. He's still averaging twenty four with a one twenty seven strike rate on difficult wickets. Aaron Jones, we have not seen anything close to the best from him. Um, so it's it's you know Zane Syed who has been one of the most successful you know uh, domestic batters in 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 all of minor league cricket did not have a great season this year, but. Corne Dry, Emilio Aponso, the Jeremy Gordon uh, has played with them as well uh, with the ball because we're including the Canadians right now. So these this team, it, it, and then the, and then their youth, uh, Supermanian, it's a team, Supermanian. It's just they've got so many good players uh, up and down this team um, that it's it's tough to uh, it's tough to look past them in in the Atlantic altogether, not just the South. But but the Atlantic is as well, and of course they have other talented youngsters in uh, Ishan Sharma and Viraj Vaghela, who I saw Viraj Vaghela make a tremendous catch a couple of weeks back. He puts a great effort into the field. He's also humongous right now. Um, like <laughs> just, he's like so tall, this kid. Uh, but yeah, it's um you know so this is a team that to me it, it, it's like like you said uh, after I agree with with everything you said about them after the. Uh, Dallas Exploria Giants. I I don't know how you you top uh, Atlanta Fire on paper. Um, Fort Lauderdale finally makes the playoffs for the very first time. This is very exciting. Obviously, I'm wearing a Morrisville Raptors hat, so there's <laughs> some, <laughs> so it's some some bittersweet here. But I know that this team uh, really puts forth a, a a good effort. They've got some very good young players and Adam Khan, Achilles Brown, who uh, Elton Tucker Jr. So they got that category you know, crossed off. They got some really good team players. Uh, Marvin Darlington, and of course, uh, Tagnarine, uh, Shander Paul, who has been, you know, basically carried their batting. He's been absolutely tremendous. Yeah, I mean, you can't speak highly enough of him. He's really emerged on the international stage as well as a batsman, and it's nice to see someone of that caliber in the minor league really contributing. Um, we had Robin Powell a couple seasons ago. Guys like that really just improve the uh, standard of cricket and you really love to see it but yeah he's been absolutely incredible 300 plus runs um he's a talent for the west indies he's going to be for a very long time um yeah. and he's formed this year for the fort lauderdale lions incredibly um and then another guy who's really emerged uh kevin stout 20 yeah. wickets and in nine innings absolutely incredible um really love to see it and glad for the or really happy for the fort uh lauderdale lions to make the playoffs this season yeah and to garcy also um, with the ball, yep, yep. They, they've just they've they they the thing to me about this team is they they got into the they, they've made it to the playoffs. They did so thanks to, you know, in, thanks in part to a couple of washouts last weekend um, that that helped them out. They didn't have to really do do anything. But but outside of Chanderpaul, who is he's averaging 45, I, the, the most surprising thing probably this season is Chanderpaul didn't score a century. You know, watching him, <laughs> watching him yeah. bat, it didn't look like he was ever going to get out. It's like, how do you get this fella out? Um, yeah. he, he doesn't have the greatest strike rate in the world, but we don't. We he hasn't played on the the best wickets either. So, um, the big question to me for this team going into a game against Atlanta Fire against such a deep team is, you're going to need someone other than Chander Paul um, to to score runs, and can they get can they get that? And um, Atlanta's, you know. They're just so deep that that I I feel like they're deep with their batting and their bowling and I and yes I think if if they're gonna stand toe to toe Fort Lauderdale's bowling has the best chance of 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 matching up there of of you know but they're but to me they they just don't seem to have enough with the bat we haven't seen Ashley Nurse go all out yet we haven't seen him score huge um, but you know as you mentioned Kevin Stout tremendous cricketer. Like I think one of the big messages that that we had this season in minor league cricket is Kevin Stout is super good, you know, <laughs> he's <laughs> he's just he's just fantastic. So we'll see what these this team can do, but um, I'll start this one out with a prediction. I think Atlanta Fire is going to win this uh, matchup. Yeah, I would have to agree. Atlanta Fire, they look good top to bottom. Um, like you said as well, it is going to come down to whether. Uh, Fort Lauderdale's bowling can kind of get through that Atlanta Fire lineup. Um, but I just think there's too many people who on their day can step up and turn a game around for the Atlanta Fire. Um, so I'm going to have to go with them. Yeah, there you go. 
So, and then, of course, you know, we get the Atlanta fire, then would have to, you know, advance to the Super 8 there. Um, if, if they, well, the winner of that advances to the Super 8. So now we'll move to the East, and we've got um, Philadelphia kind of living up to the hype this season. We, we picked them to, to, to win the division, and they did. Um, and, well, we picked them and New Jersey uh, Stallions, one of those two teams. But, yeah, uh, the New Jersey Stallions, uh, we'll face the winner of the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers uh, versus the new, uh, against the New England Eagles. Now, that was an interesting situation there. We had a couple of forfeits that necessitated a playoff game between uh, NJSC and New England Eagles. Um, both of these, the East was a slugfest this this season. I mean, it's always a slugfest, but but we had some new wickets that 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 obviously. They're going to, have to take some time to, to be good batting surfaces. Uh, and we know that the outfields in the in the East are thick. So it was a tough combination for batters this season specifically. Um, New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, I think on paper, if you look at this team, um, I think I would give them a little bit of an edge over the New England Eagles. But at times this season, I think the New England Eagles have have go- have gotten hot and, and managed to perform uh, better as a group. Uh, New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, the one way I would describe this team over the last three seasons is hot and cold. You know, they're they they seem to be either either, you know, dominating a team or just or just failing. And um, they certainly have the talent, though. Let's talk about the Somerset Cavaliers first. Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers, you know, one of the premier premier teams in the country, I would say they're they're normally known for having really good names on their lineup guys who really step up and you know this year i wouldn't say it was much different you've got some really talented guys on this squad who can really turn things around um and then also also as you mentioned you know when you look at the batting you don't especially in the east and the south you're going to see strike rates in t20 that you're not super typical or used to seeing and that's just because you know the wickets and the grounds aren't super conducive to high high scoring games we saw tons of low scoring games this season. I believe 50 runs was defended at one point. You right. know, stuff that were atypical for for T20, T20 cricket. So all things considered, you know, you need to think about the potential that some of these players have when they do get the opportunity to play on some pretty good grounds. Um, you've got Sonny Patel, Xavier Marshall, um, Kareem Agor, uh, Gajanan Singh. You've got talent on this team. There's no doubting that. Um, so I would still, you know, back the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers to make a decent push in the postseason. Yeah, and and honestly, every single week I'm looking at Saad Ben Safar's stats, and I'm considering him as the for the best Atlantic Bowler of the week. Every single week, when I when I name those those players, he's in the he's in the top three. You know, if he's played that weekend, he's in the top three. Uh, his economy is under four. He's taken 14 wickets in nine in nine innings. We know that Saad is a is a high quality player. He plays for Canada. Um, he's captain in, in, in Canada at, at present, I believe. Um, played in the GT20 for three three seasons. He's he's performed under pressure for in the GT20. Uh, he's performed under pressure internationally. He's he's a massive boost to this team. Yasser Muhammad as well, uh, young player for for uh, for uh, New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. Najaf Shah. Has only played two games. He was their captain in the past, but yeah, Gajanon Singh to me has been terrific with the ball this season. Oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. at which we know he's capable of that. We we know what he's capable of. He's done it for USA in the past as well. So, uh, yeah, this team just looks. It, it looks. I mean, it's hard to go through the names on this uh, on this team and not say that they're that they. I mean, they clearly deserve to be in the playoffs. They're a very good team. They could beat anyone on their day. They. I really believe that. Um, so the question is, how will they do in a, in a in this matchup against New England uh, Eagles? And then how will they do in a Super 8 situation? Can they be consistent for long enough is the big question for me. But yes, New England Eagles, let's talk a little bit about them. They they um, they surprised a lot this season. Um, they haven't had a lot of success in the league over the over the years. They still they didn't really have a lot of good performances with the bat. This was a team that that was winning games. You know, with eight eight wickets lost. You know, they they nobody was was surging forward with them. They had one half century on the team, and it was I think their number seven batter. It was Rizwan Mazar. Um, so that's 
that's not ideal when a guy who's most of the season batted at number seven score is your leading run score. Um, so that's to me the biggest question with them. Now they do have Jalad Dua, who's fantastic, a Perva Maheshram, um, Sushant Madani, they brought over uh, Gaurav Grover to me. Uh, I loved watching him bowl. They Christopher Barnwell, when you have him on the team, and and you know, he hasn't really come through yet with the bat, but he has with the ball. Uh, but to me, their best player this season has been uh, Gaurav Grover. Uh, I've got to say, I mean, he's been great with the ball, great with the feet, great in the field. Yeah. Um, like you said, batting hasn't really clicked for them. Um, no really standout performances this season. And it's definitely been a struggle. Um, definitely been scraping by, I would say a little bit, but to me, what stands out is when you look at their bowling lineup, there's been contributors everywhere, you know, hasn't been one guy who's taken all the wickets. You've seen a bunch of different guys who've, you know, contributed when their time, when it's been asked of them, um, so you've got you've got contributors on the bowling side of things. I'm my biggest question mark for them is can you step up with the bat when it matters? And it's going to matter versus the New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers. Oh, 100 percent it's gonna matter. And and I, I actually did pick them a couple weeks back, uh um I, when I was talking to 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 uh to Jay and Matthew. I had picked we both we kind of both agreed that we thought New England was going to advance to the playoffs. Uh, I'm I'm happy for them that they did. They've given us some really exciting moments this season uh, as fans. Uh, Samarth Tawari, he's been tr- tremendous. Uh, he's not a player that we've really been talking about. Uh, Ra- Ram Dahal has been good. They they've just they've they, like you said they've gotten they've gotten memorable for performances from just about everybody on this team. So in this East, the Somerset Cavaliers versus New England Eagles, who's who's your pick there? I got to go with New Jersey. I think they've just got a little bit more talent on that team. Um, the Somerset Cavaliers, I think they I think they take the take this one over the Eagles. But um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. Glad to see the Eagles in the playoffs after a while. So let's look at a little bit at this Philadelphians team and talk about why they made the playoffs. First of all, deep team, uh, a good bowling. Um, and they've gotten some contributions. Uh, I think Rajnanan has been the pick of, of their uh, statistics show that too, uh, of their bowlers, but they've gotten great stuff from Devishwari Prashad. Uh, this season, the captain is Jonathan Fu. The the player coach uh, is, is Liam Plunkett. Um, Fu's been good with the ball. Uh, Abdul Jabbar, they've gotten great out contributions from a lot of different people. Uh, uh, Drysdale, his typical self when he's been able to play. Um, and and it's just, we've seen a lot of good stuff from from just about everyone on this team, but I'm saying a lot of names that have performed well this season, and I haven't even said the name of Ryan Scott, who they acquired, um, opening batter. We know him. He's he's one of the most prolific scorers in minor league cricket. Um, and when he when he does join the the 1,000 runs. Let me take a look at how many runs he has right now. Uh, he's got exactly 1,000 runs. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> he's got exactly 1,000 runs. Uh, I think he was 38 runs short or something last week, before last weekend's games. Uh, but at a strike rate of 160, 160.5, and I think there's 11 players now with 1,000 runs in minor league cricket, and he has the highest strike rate by far of anybody that that has that many runs. So we've seen him briefly for the USA team against uh, Ireland. Uh, you know, I think the, he's building a case for himself again. But what are your thoughts about this particular team, this uh, this Philadelphia squad? Yeah, I think they've got a great balance. Um, Ryan Scott over from Michigan, I believe. Um, he's absolutely destructive. Had the opportunity to play against him two seasons ago, I believe. And wow, he can send that ball flying. He's quality at the top jonathan Fu, he's performed for seasons now for the philadelphians and then you've got you know liam plunkett and a bunch of guys who have stepped up this season raj nanan uh Granchu sharma um some guys who you've heard about um who haven't really taken um charge but have really stepped up this year um so i i really like this philadelphians team um are they as good as some of the other number one teams in the other divisions i think that's yet to be yet to be seen, but I, I think you can back them to go to go quite far. So a team that we haven't mentioned yet is the New Jersey Stallions. Uh, the Somerset Cavaliers and the Eagles are playing to face off against the Stallions, and the winner of that advances to the Super 8. We have a situation here where New Jersey Stallions, uh, they had a great season. They actually started the season terribly, um, and they rebounded super well. They lost their very first uh, couple of games, 
and it was it was just shocking that 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 you know they lost to the to the Yorkers, um, and then they lost to the Philadelphians to start the season, and then they went on a nice little run of winning about uh, what six games in a row uh, before they fell again to the to the Philadelphians. <laughs> So this team is so used to having a lot of success. Daron Davis, uh, who, you know, has always been a good all-round player in minor league cricket, but this season, you know, he was absolutely fantastic for this team um, when they needed him. He ended up, you know, moving his way up the order, batting three, at, batting at number three a couple of times, and that's inc- impressive on a team like this that features as many potential number three batters as they do. Um, so that just goes to show how good he was. Now in the field, he's incredible. He's tough to top in the field. I don't know if you know, there's I don't know if there's a player who's had a better season in the field that he did. Highlight catch after highlight catch. Yes, there's a few. Um, uh, AB ready out in uh, San Diego, for example, was phenomenal too. But oh, let's, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's talk about this this team and how how good they are and what makes them what separates them from the pack. So, what's in your opinion? What's their biggest feature? For me, it's just got to be that batting depth. I think there's just so many people that can step up on any given day. Um, you've got Dominic Ricky, who's one of ten or eleven players to reach a thousand runs in minor league. He's just a consistent performer year after year. This year's no different. As you said, Jerome Davis, who's been incredible on both sides of the ball and in the field, true three-dimensional player. Um, and then um, the emergence of uh, Bravish Shetty, he's been really good this season as well. Um, and then you even, you know, you look at this team and you're like, oh, where's that one name? And that name I'm talking about is Saite Jamukumala, the guy who's been so good all these years, just really hasn't gone going this season. Um, but we all know the power that he can be. Um, and when you've got a guy like that who hasn't been performing and the team is still, you know, second in their division. That's how you right. know it's a it's a very solid team. Um, yeah. That's just on the batting side of things. You look at the bowling, you know, tons of guys who have stepped up, four, I believe, who have crossed 10 wickets. Um, so, honestly, just a really well-balanced team, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, like, as I said before, I think Davis is the MVP of the team this season. Um, but, yes, looking at the, the bowling side of things, you'll see better numbers. I, as we mentioned before, the wickets – in the East, a little bit diff- super difficult for batting this season. So you're going to yep. see some some deflated numbers, but it does it does add to the importance of batting, as, as you said. It, 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 when you have a, a difficult batting surface, you need those players who ha- who have who can who can you know who can manage on those in those uh, situations. And and they've got a load of batters who do. We saw uh, Bhaskar Yadram uh, on the team this season, and we were looking forward to having him just you know, pummel the ball like he normally does, but he had to dial it back a lot this year uh, to stay in the middle for longer periods. But we got great stuff from my, my love, Rob, who again, um, Stephen Wig was, was once again, good. Jesse Singh, his usual self, Davis, the four of them leading the charge with the, with the ball. Um, and then you, you know, you, you had great, decent contributions from Ray Remrotten and Bhaskar Yadram, but you know we had situations this season where some of their this is one of those teams that's so deep that every once in a while you'll see a star player on their team that actually has to has to sit out. Uh, yeah, it doesn't fit in. It doesn't fit into the equation for that particular game. Um, and this is it's an interesting thing, but uh, that's how deep they are. So I like this team a lot. And we as we we kind of picked New Jersey Somerset Cavaliers to advance to play New Jersey Stallions uh, in this matchup. Who do you see? Who do you see coming out ahead? Yeah, this one's a close one as well. Um, that New Jersey duel. I think I'm going to have to go with the Stallions. I think they're tested and proven. They've been good year after year. I feel like they know how to win and crunch um, at crunch time. Um, and I think that their batting, their depth is good enough for somebody to have a good day when it comes down to it. So I'm going to have to go with the Stallions. Yeah, and you know one of the things that this that this uh you know, super eights kind of allows these teams to do is to the, the teams in the West and the South. I'm sorry, the teams in the East and the South spe- specifically is to, to acclimate themselves to the conditions okay. in, in, in Dallas, you know, where, where these, the super eights going to transpire or in Texas where the super eights going to transpire. 
um, they're going to, you know, it's kind of nice to see them each get three games down in that situation, heading into the, you know, whoever emerges from that. So the Atlantic is going to, is going to have to adapt to those, to those wickets a lot more than the Pacific will. I think the, the, the central teams have obviously the advantage in, in, in the, those matchups in the super eight round, um, and the Atlantic round, everyone's on the same, you know, footing uh, there. So w- I think we'll see finally these these Atlantic teams are going to have to get more used to a T20 mindset if they're going to emerge from this and if they're going to end up succeeding in the finals round against whoever emerges from that difficult Pacific uh you know group half of the of the super eights so who do you got emerging from the Atlantic division to head into the 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 league final yeah so I believe the people we've picked to play in that super four were the Stallions, the Atlanta Fire, the Atlanta Lightning, and the Philadelphians, obviously. Um, for me, um, I'm going to have to go with the Atlanta Fire. I think I think they're a very strong team um, from top to bottom. I think they've got so much power in that batting lineup. You know, if you somehow get through their heavy hitters at the top, you've still got such a strong middle order with Ovis Pinar, Jamar Hamilton. Um, I just don't see how, you know, any bowling lineup uh, in that Atlantic conference is going to really get through all of those guys um, and then have to chase it with the likes of Cornet Dry coming at you. So I, for me, it's it's going to be the Atlanta Fire. No, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think I think if I had to pick up one of these teams, as hot as the Atlanta Lightning has been, mm-hmm. uh, it's the depth of the fire to me. You know, and I think, um, you know, Atlanta Lightning are a fun team to watch. I really like their team. I like what they've done with the team this season. I like their social media is taking a, a step in the right direction too. They're they're promoting themselves a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. and the Atlanta Fire's always kind of done a decent job of of promoting themselves, especially on the site on the day. But yep. yeah, it's at the end of the day, it comes down to what can you do on the field. And Atlanta Fire's been there before. I would pick them again right now to head to the to the final uh, to the league final. Um, and that takes us to the Pacific. This is a tough choice here in the Pacific. This is this is really rough in the Pacific. We 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 mentioned East Bay, uh, the Strikers, and then the Mustangs. And I I don't think we picked a winner between Michigan and the winner of did we pick a winner between Michigan and the winner of the Lone Stars the, the Exforia? We did it. We didn't. Okay, yeah. well let's do that right now. Um, yeah. Michigan facing the the winning uh, you know the winner between Lone Star Athletics and Dallas Exforia. Who's going to win that game? Yeah, things to consider, you know, you're playing these games in Texas. Um, you know, uh, Exploria, they've got the home field advantage there. And then Michigan hasn't gone up against, you know, comparatively against great opposition this year. Um, talented team, no doubt. But I think Exploria edges out Michigan in that in that, in that that game. That's an interesting pick. Yeah, it's it's that's a boy. That's a tough one. That that round yeah. Michigan versus Exploria. That's a really tough one. I think you have more people, more players on Exforia who've kind of advanced further in uh in 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 minor league cricket. Uh, Michigan's been together a little bit longer. Um, the majority of their team. Um, I think Michigan's going to come out with an awful lot of momentum. Uh, and you know, I think it it might it might actually help um Exforia to play that that initial game against uh, Lone Star. Uh, so uh, this is a tough choice, tough. but, but I think, I think I gotta, I gotta lean a little bit more towards the, the, uh, I gotta lean a little more towards Dallas six four as well. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> that's a tough one. So we're, we're kind of lockstep here. This isn't any fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I do think that it'll end up being um, Exforia in that group. Now, in the Super Eights, in their half of the Super Eights, um, who's going to advance from the Pacific to face who we determined the Atlanta Fire? Uh, who's going to advance to face them in the in the final? In your opinion? Yeah, this is going to be a competitive round. If you have to ask me, there's a lot of good talent um, out of the people that are emerging, out of the teams that are emerging from the uh from the west and the central but i mean in my opinion there's a clear-cut team that has to emerge um and that's the dallas mustangs i think 
from top to bottom, they've played incredibly this season. They've got great momentum and great players. Corey Anderson, Andreas Gauss in that batting lineup. You know, there's just so many guys you have to dismiss to get through them. And then in terms of bowling, you know, it just keeps coming at you with Esan Adil, Nosh. You know, there's just incredible talent on both sides of the ball. It's going to be a very, very difficult team to beat. And I think that one of these other teams is going to have to really play play their pants off if they want to if they want to beat the Dallas Mustangs. Um, no, I agree. So I mean, I got the Mustangs out of there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I got that. I got that also. It's just tough to overlook the fact that uh, Corey Anderson and Andres House are both in the top four uh, in the in the Pacific in in uh, in scoring. And actually, you know, both of them, they're actually in the top four of the entire league in scoring. And they have both happen to play on the same team. And we know how deep they bat after that, too. So if you do happen to get those two guys out, you know, you, you still got your your work cut out for you. I don't think there's another team in 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 the set, in the Pacific that's as deep as they are. I think man, I cannot wait to see that East Bay versus Mustangs matchup in the Super 8s. I can't wait to see that game because if there's one team I think that can top top them, it's the East Bay and their bowling. Mustangs will have a huge advantage playing uh basically in their home state, you know, um yeah. so yeah, that's to me. That's the big, the big separator is they played so well there, and um, yeah. and I just can't see anybody you know knocking them out now as 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 hot as they've been. That's right. You know they're they're a very good team and they're getting hot at just the right time, and I think that 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 matters a lot. So, um, but we'll see what transpires. It all starts this weekend. We've we've uh, talked for a long time about this, which has been a lot of fun. Um, there's been a lot to cover. This has probably been my, my longest discussion this season, and I've had some long ones. <laughs> but with Sahil, thanks for joining me. It's great to it's great to have you on. I've been wanting to get one of you guys from It's Called Cricket on here, um, or all of you guys. Um, but yeah, keep it up with the good work that you guys are doing. Um, you know, bringing a, a awareness to minor league cricket to American cricket in general, and it's been it's been fun hanging out with you guys. We got to hang out a little bit around the uh, major league cricket. Um, you know, everybody, everybody in, in that left corner of the, um, uh, of the press area trying to, trying to, see, <laughs> <laughs> trying to see the action, but yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. So keep up the hard work and um, the good work. And um, you know, we'll see, we'll see if our predictions come true. I'm hoping there's a few upsets in here. Oh yeah. Yeah. We had some pretty consistent takes, but hopefully we get to see some, some action as the playoffs transpire. Um, okay. But yeah, thank you for having me, Nate. It was a lot of fun. Love having these chats. Um, thank you for all the work you do as well. Cool. No problem, man. Thanks a lot.